Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, congratulations, you made it through another daylight saving time morning. <laughs> and from what I can tell, you figured it out because you are here. What will be very telling is the next service. Uh, how many people arrived just a little bit later than they had planned on? I always think that uh, this is a hard day for young families, so an extra shout out to you young families who were able to wrangle children a little bit early from their normal routine to be here in worship or to be in Sunday school this morning. It is one of those days when we are excited to have a little more daylight that will be coming to us in these next weeks and months ahead. But if you're like me, I grieve that hour of sleep. And I have read about how it is we have uh, to cope when we are lacking a little sleep. And the simple antidote to that is more sunlight. Seems simple enough. And I hope that this coming week allows more of that light in not only my life, but yours. That theme of darkness and light permeates our gospel reading for today as well. Rather timely on a daylight savings time morning. Light and darkness is not new to us as we read the gospel of John. In fact, it is a theme that begins right at the beginning that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. That idea of Jesus coming into the world as light. And that contrast of light and darkness uh, runs through what Jesus teaches today when it comes to how we long to live in the darkness but that we are called into the light. But Jesus is not preaching a sermon to the masses today in this segment of John's Gospel. But rather, Jesus is in the midst of a conversation, a conversation with Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a teacher of the law. He is one who knows scripture well, is looked to for his authority over scripture, but he is intrigued by Jesus and his ministry. Now on the screen is a picture from the series, The Chosen, which has become quite popular in reimagining and telling the story of Jesus and his life and ministry. Maybe it's something that you are watching. It's in, I think, the third or fourth season now, even having full-length feature films that are in the theaters. Well, if you happen to watch this episode, Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the middle of the night. And that is biblical. That is exactly how it is recorded just before what we hear in today's reading. Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the darkness of the night because it would be risky for him to approach Jesus with his questions or really even be seen with Jesus in the light of day. And those questions are probing and disturbing to Nicodemus. And so they sit across the table with a lamp burning, and in the darkness, he asks those questions. Isn't that true of us as well? Sometimes it is in the dead of night when our mind circles around questions, wondering why, what if, how, and even wondering, God, are you there? Perhaps this scene between Nicodemus and Jesus opens us up to being reminded that we too, in those dark places of our wonderings and questionings, can come to Jesus and ask, be in conversation with Jesus. Well, Jesus answers Nicodemus' question and questions by looking to the past before he can point to the future. He tells a story that Nicodemus, teacher of the law, would know well. A story about the Israelites who are uh, led by Moses into a promised land. But on the way, those Israelites, those people of God, people of promise, complain, become irritated with the journey, uncertain as to how long and what if, asking questions. This story is recorded in the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, and it is a familiar story in that we know of that journeying, but perhaps you don't know this detail. You see, in that story, there is a point where there are serpents or snakes, and they are biting at the people as they journey, in fact, killing many of them. And so God instructs Moses to put a 
bronze serpent on a pole lifted up, and then he is to instruct the people to look at the bronze serpent, and they will be healed, and they will live. Kind of an obscure story, but Jesus' point is that now, Nicodemus, now there will be one lifted up, and looking upon that one lifted up, you will be healed, you will be saved, you will live. And what follows is that familiar verse that many of us know by heart. Jesus says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, may not die, but may have eternal life. Now, as we know that verse, it is in the past tense, which makes sense because whenever scripture is written, of course it is written after the fact. We know the fullness of stories around Jesus' life, death and resurrection. So that past tense, God loved the world, it makes sense to us. We know that is true. But in the context of this conversation, I imagine it was a little bit different in the moment between Nicodemus and Jesus. Rather, Nicodemus, God loves the world. God is active in the world. God has sent me to redeem the world, to save it, so that there may be eternal life, an action of the present and the future. And what difference does that little tweak to this verse we know so well make for you and me today? Well, I hope it is a reminder of what God continues to do in Christ that what God has done in the past once and for all, saving us from sin and death and all the powers of darkness that swirl around this world, why that continues to grant us hope and life and a future. In fact, living in that promise, I think, changes us to consider what it means to be saved. Now, we Lutheran Christians don't use language around being saved as often as perhaps our evangelical brothers and sisters. We're not often asking each other, when were you saved? We know we were saved through the act of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. That is our salvation. But in fact, Lutheran Christians spend a little more time on grace, that we are saved by grace through faith, not our own doing, but through what Christ has done for us so that we may live fully in the light. We may have places in our world that are dark. We may have places in our own life and spirit that feel filled with darkness. But in fact, we are always called into the light. And living in the light makes a difference for this world. In last January's news, I happened to read about a community in western Minnesota where they had an interesting phenomena happen. There were pillars of light that appeared one morning as people awakened in their community. These pillars of light uh, are not uh, totally unique in that they happen around the world because it is a meteorological phenomena. And in fact, what causes these pillars of light is simply five-sided crystals, ice crystals in clouds that basically reflect the light from the earth and create these pillars of light. The scientific name for these pillars of light is light pillars. (laughs) Hope you can remember that today. These light pillars uh, do happen on occasion, but they are rather rare. And what caught my attention with this story is the town in western Minnesota where these light pillars appeared. The name of the town is Graceville, Minnesota. I don't make this stuff up, for real. Graceville, Minnesota. In fact, it had me thinking today as I considered being called to be people of light how it is that perhaps we live in Graceville every day. Each day we live in this abundant grace of a God who is good, who does not wish to condemn us, but wishes to give us life everlasting, life here and now, so we may be pillars of light in the world. And not just individually, but we as a congregation, as people who reflect the light of Christ, 
It is always my prayer that Bethel is that pillar of light among many pillars of light in the community. You heard some of those responses in our spotlight this morning. People who have benefited in ways that have given them a little light in their life. But how it is then that each and every week, each and every day, you and I partner with each other to share the light of Christ. Indeed, we live by grace alone, so that it may be a light to a world where there is darkness that is abounding. May you, in the midst of your calling, live out fully in the light. The promise that Jesus loves you has come to redeem you, save you, grant you grace upon grace, so there may be joy in your living. Amen. Please rise.